The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for professional medical advice. Sweaty and pissed, sweaty and pissed, menopause makes me sweaty and pissed. Hello. Hi, Leanne. Hello, everybody. It's sweaty and pissed, menopause and more. Yes, it is. (laughs) Here we are again. <laughs> and I'm Leanne Morgan, comedian and patient. And this is <laughs> Karen Nickel, nurse practitioner. And opera singer. And opera singer. And mother. Mother, mother for mother us, our and, producer. Uh, and, t- and tiny ankles. Yes. Um. Okay, we've talked about all kinds of things in our last few episodes, yep. but we want to talk about breast cancer awareness and uh, all the things that go with that, yeah. because we just we just finished breast care, cancer awareness yes, month October. In, in October, yeah. and um, so we thought, wouldn't it be good for us to remind everybody that we need to be aware all the time, all the time? Because I don't know about you, but well, you you're doctoring people, but I can throw a rock, and I know ten people that's had breast cancer. Yeah, it's it's pretty common. You know, I, I think the uh, the screening um, has uh, people getting screening has have uh, gone up in numbers quite a bit. I think more and more people are getting screening, so it's I think they're catching more uh, breast cancers. But you know, but there are some organizations like the American Academy of Family Physicians and American Cancer Society who are. Uh, looked at the frequency of of having mammography done and um especially um after 55 they've been recommending maybe even going to two year every two years just to avoid unnecessary procedures and unnecessary testing but um current guidelines are still annually uh, well how do you feel about that well i i agree I, i do agree that i think there are um, more tests being done, more biopsies being done because we're getting screening more frequently or we're getting it annually. So um, they look at the numbers needed to treat, you know, to how cost effective or um, beneficial is a test based on how many cancers we find for instance. And if you have to do a thousand mammograms, and I'm just throwing out numbers, I, I but a thousand mammograms for one to catch one cancer versus 10 mammograms to catch one cancer, then um, that's not as cost effective and beneficial for the, for the female to, to do that. So that's what those are the numbers they're looking at is the numbers needed to treat. And um, and they're just seeing for the number of mam- or the frequency of the mammogram, we don't get additional benefit in terms of catching those cancers. So and there are early cancers like DCIS that um, technically could you could have watchful waiting on certain type, you know, certain types of DCIS. What is DCIS? Ductal carcinoma in situ. So it means it's a cancer in the duct, but it's staying in the duct. It's in situ means it's, it's, it uh, hasn't spread beyond that. Okay. Beyond that duct. Um, but most of the time people do at, uh, at least a lumpectomy uh, to remove it. People are a little nervous about watchful waiting, but because t- um, a good portion of the time, a DCIS will uh, resolve on its own. So anyway, that's that's why there's some debate about the frequency of mammography. But um, yeah, it's but it is important screening test. Um, and, uh, you know, there if your insurance doesn't cover it well, uh, hopefully it does. But if your insurance doesn't cover it well, or you don't have insurance, or you have insurance as a big deduct deductible, and they don't cover um, wellness exams, 
uh, there are ways to get a mammogram either at no cost or in or inexpensively. You know, there's some. I think one of our breast centers here has a mobile unit, and I don't. I I think it's one or two days a year they um, provide free mm-hmm. mammograms. Um, there is a website called MD Save. M is a Mary, D is in dog, save.com. And you can purchase um, testing on that website. Uh, and I think during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, they you can get a mammogram for $88. Oh. Yeah. So there are ways to um, do it cost effectively or even for free. Um, you just have to be a little proactive in in finding those places and and like or going to a website like md save and and purchasing it at a reduced price so now there's a and i'm just saying i don't know what i'm talking about you know i don't know medical Uh, but there (laughs) is there is like a genetic yes thing Mm -hmm. and then there's yes what environmental what would you call it yeah, environmental. Environmental, and so yeah. the environmental are those are the things that we can do yeah. to keep from our chances of going up to get breast cancer. Right, and they would be, I would think, weight gain if we're we've got a too high of a BMI. That's right, correct. Mm-hmm. And um, what else, my darling? <laughs> So, well, let me just back up one little step to the the genetic factor. So a lot of people may know about BRCA, the BRCA gene. We have BRCA1 and 2. And um, we don't screen for those genetic predispositions or those genetic variants. Um, But those will often be done after someone's diagnosed with breast cancer to maybe help other family members and see if other family members need to be... um, treated also or excuse me not treated but um tested and also if you have breast cancer and you have a uh, BRCA gene you have an increased risk for ovarian cancer so then the decision making has to happen whether you want to have your ovaries out or removed surgically in other words and um so it the genetic testing helps in that in that way mm-hmm. In terms of a risk reduction, uh, you're right. Uh, being overweight increases your risk. Um, smoking increases your risk. Uh, you know, if you live in an area where there's a lot of environmental uh, pollution or you work in a place that has a lot of, you know, you're, where you're exposed to a lot of chemicals, uh, those things can increase your risk. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, I tell women to try to uh, avoid extra estrogenic um, things that can can st- stimulate breast tissue, like um, you know, avoid eating uh, meat and milk that's not organic. If you if it's mm-hmm. not organic, it could have been processed. With, well, they give them animals hormones mm. to sort of fatten them up. And um, so you want to have hormone-free meat and milk. You want to, I, I tell my patients also to avoid mineral oil products, mm-hmm. um, petroleum products on their skin, because those act like estrogens in your body. They're called xenoestrogens. And so, you know, use a a moisturizer or lotion that is does not have mineral oil or petroleum in it uh, or petroleum based uh, product in it um, avoid heating your food in plastic in a microwave because the plastics can leach uh, uh-huh. xenoestrogen into your food uh, a clear water bottle with if light goes through it that can Uh, leach xenoestrogen into the water from the plastic so those are some just little everyday things that you can do to help reduce to reduce risk exercising regularly eating a healthy diet and by healthy i mean as much whole food 
fruits as and possible, vegetables. you know, mm-hmm. versus processed foods. Um, the more you can. What about co- stress? Well, stress. Uh, yeah, stress. I mean, is everybody a needs to be working on their stress, don't yeah. they? So doing mindfulness, prayer, yeah. whether it's prayer, prayer, meditation, yoga, yoga. Yeah, relaxing, breathing. There's so many apps now. Oh, yeah. Like on my Fitbit, if I press, um, okay, run, stop, watch, relax for two <laughs> minutes, I can tell such a big difference in myself when I take time to breathe. Yeah. And since my mom's been in Vanderbilt, they have told her, breathe, take in big breaths and um, breathe in and then blow out your mouth like you're, um, when they smell the roses, Blow out the candles. candles Smell yes. the roses. Blow out the candles. Right. Yeah, people don't do deep breathing. When I, on an exam, when I listen to people's lungs, I'm telling you, a lot of the time, they're dizzy after they've... Oh, my Lord. <laughs> what can we do for that? Yeah, cause they, because they are not used to deep breathing. Breathing. Oh, yeah. murder. Well, especially women. Women tend to be shallow breathers. They, you know just sort of breathe in their upper chest area they don't get let that diaphragm really drop and let the air really fill the lungs all the way to the bottom um yeah sort of think of it like like a ball drop the air is a ball dropping down to your diaphragm so that you're because when you watch a baby breathe their abdomen moves it's not their chest moving their abdomen moves when they're breathing Oh. And, or when you watch a cat or, do- or a dog, I guess. Dog. Yeah. <laughs> I and looked at cat. Uh-huh. Dogs do. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, they you see their abdomen moving when they breathe, not not their chest, because the breathing is just the diaphragm dropping down. And that yeah, and, and that dropping of the diaphragm makes the abdomen poke out. Yeah. You know. Like, I, I was raised in a rural area, and they, mm-hmm. my mom and daddy still don't. They have internet, but we didn't get cable mm-hmm. until, I mean, everybody had cable. I didn't know what cable was until I went to college. Mm-hmm. That's how rural. and it. But it's outside of Nashville. Yeah. But it's just in a rural community. But now they have, I mean, of course they have internet, but they don't have the ba- broad bandwidth or whatever to have Netflix on their smart TV. But but what I was going to say was even people that don't have access to a yoga studio or yeah. something like that, oh. you can watch it on YouTube on your phone. Oh, yeah. They're really you great. Know, yeah, and, you're right. And people, and especially with my, sitting and watching my mom sick, like you realize how much you need to take care of yourself. I mean, this is one shot. Mm-hmm. And, and I know you've been preaching to me this for years, but I mean, you're sitting here thin as a, but she does, let me tell everybody, she does body pump and <laughs> body combat and uh, like two or three classes in a row. Yeah. But um, it's probably kept you from losing your mind, having to attend to all these people <laughs> like me. <laughs> this sometimes is not compliant and forgets to put my vitamin D under my tongue. Um, and I'm like, why am I swelling? Oh, I didn't take my spiral length or whatever. So, um, <laughs> But really, it's important to exercise yeah. and keep your mind clear and and relieve the stress of every mm-hmm. day and in our environment. And there's so much going on. Everybody's on the phone and nobody's talking and nobody's connecting. And, you know, yeah. I don't mean to get on the whole thing, but it is. Yeah, well, and also sleep. We, you know, people don't sleep well or they have untreated sleep apnea. You know, getting a good night's sleep is also key for your keeping a healthy immune system because your a healthy immune system is what destroys abnormal cells seeks out destroys abnormal cells and so that's how we our body's designed to stop cancer but you got to give it a chance to do it you know you 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 got to support your body so it can seek out an abnormal cell and destroy it before it becomes an abnormal mass. And, um, but we do so many things that, um, work against that. Our diet, our lack of exercise, our poor sleep. Um, so our, our stress and, Mm -hmm. and, and inability to reduce stress. 
Well, I have a good friend that was um, diagnosed with breast cancer a couple of years ago, and mm-hmm. she went through chemo, radiation, double mastectomy, all of it. But she's doing great. Mm-hmm. Good. But her doctor said, you really need to watch your weight because she was she's on, um, oh, that estrogen Like an astrazole or... Um, like Arimidex or Tamoxifen. Tamoxifen. Mm-hmm. And um, he said, I, you really need to watch your weight. And also, he said, really watch the sugar. That sugar feeds mm-hmm. cancer. Well, yeah, it, it stimulates cell growth, all cell growth. So, yeah, it's... Well, and the weight, part of the weight issue is that, you know, our fat cells make estrogen. So... You know, we have a lot more estrogen secretion if we have a lot more fat cells. So, yeah. Oh, oh. Well, I'm really (laughs) working on it. That just depressed Leanne. (laughs) Well, and I've got these big old implants from after I had three babies and nursed them. And my nipple was hanging by a thread. (laughs) And I was young, and I had more life left in me. And yeah. I remember folding them up to put them in my bra. <laughs> and I remember being, we lived in North Carolina, uh, South Carolina, and we were visiting this little Methodist church. And I was so lonely, and we had moved there, and I had two babies. And um, and I didn't know I was pregnant with the third one yet. Yeah. And I had on a little turtleneck, and we were standing up to sing a hymn, and I had on a little bra, and my... I, my breast had atrophied and sunken in so much from nursing three babies yeah. that my bra came up over <laughs> my breast and were it was like two cones, a padded bra under my turtleneck, <laughs> around my neck. They were on my collarbone. And I thought then, I mean, I've got to do something. And then I got pregnant with a third baby, nursed her till she was 10 months old. And I remember my mom saw me without a top on and she goes, oh, my baby. <laughs> And my, and cause I see it, I want implants. And my dad was like, you don't need that. And then mama said, Jim, she <laughs> needs to need them. <laughs> and that was in 90, I don't even know what was that. Maybe, wait, that baby was born in 98. So probably around 2000. Yeah. Or, wait, when was she? Yeah, she was born in 98. And so, um, I, you know, I was young. I had life left in me. And at that time, the trend was to have not big Pamela Lee Anderson, kind of, but, but not the, like now if somebody gets them, they get them smaller mm-hmm. and you want to look fit mm-hmm. and thin. Mm-hmm. Well, back then, I mean, I remember my doctor looked at me and goes, you've got a big frame because I'm 5'8". <laughs> and he was like, well, you need a D. Well, of course a man, you know, yeah. says that to you. They're, they're like a big uh, big C, small D. Oh my gosh! Now with you know weight and estrogen, I don't know what all. I go into soma and they're like, "You're a double D." What well, you know? I'm like, "What?" It's awful. And I look at myself in mirror in a mirror. Like I'll go by a store or something, and I'll see my reflection. I think, "Oh, bless her heart. Look at that big woman. It's me. It's me. My breast. You can put a glass of water on the side of my breast and hold it." So, and my, I remember my sister going, you better not get implants, you're going to get cancer. But that doesn't necessarily, I mean, I've never had any trouble, knock on wood, praise God. Yeah. I've never had anything. I know there was a scare that these textured implants oh, yeah. lately, yeah. but mm-hmm. I don't have texture. I think that's pretty unusual. I think those were mostly used, used in Europe. Oh. I don't think they used them here very much. Well, it, mine are way overdue for yeah. whatever well, happens you know, to it's you. interesting because there are plastic surgeons who now specialize in explants where they're taking out women's implants and and sometimes not replacing them well you remember you and i talked yeah. about this yeah. and you said back then you go i don't know i mean you might have to have i mean there not, may not be well or something in there because it's going to be so mm. Or maybe maybe it was my at the time my gynecologist. Mm. She was like, I don't know, but but you said there you thought I could go and talk to somebody maybe to see. Yeah, I mean, and you know, I'm still young. I'm 53 it years old, it. but I still got to do it. So I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I would do. But I maybe could go. Small. Well, it would be good. To, it would good be good to just get your 
you know, see what your options are. Uh, you know, probably they would encourage a lift. If you took the implants out completely and didn't replace them, they probably would encourage a lift. That, yeah, they. I mean, because my nipple is still above my crease. But, <laughs> which if your nipple's not above your crease, if you're looking at getting implants, they say, oh, you need an implant and a lift. Yeah. But praise God, I've always had a nipple above the crease. <laughs> so, and I think they would still be. Now, it might look like a deflated... I don't know what, but I know that now that baby is 21 and I got them when she was probably 18 months or mm-hmm. so they're, they're past, a, uh, if there's an expiration date <laughs> or something. And I know if I go to Chuck, he'll be like, you're always wanting something, which I haven't. It's just been the one thing or my well, veins fixed, Yeah, you know? And, um, but anyway, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I've got too many other irons in the fire right now to worry about right. my breasts but i have not ever had any problems with them with like breast cancer or mm-hmm. anything like that thank the lord mm-hmm. but i know that they just do an extra picture yeah they just have to do a little bit different positional imaging to get that yeah. tissue underneath the implant yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. mine are beneath the muscle mm-hmm and I nursed three, you know, another baby. Well, no, wait, did I nurse anybody after? No, but I thought if I do have like another baby. a random baby, person? You mean, yeah. <laughs> you mean, I, I well, well, I just stayed pregnant for years, and I kept uh, thinking, uh, oh, I wanted a fourth baby really yeah, badly. So yeah. I if I thought I wanted them under the muscle so I could nurse another baby if I uh, needed to. Oh, but, I see. But I didn't get a chance to nurse another baby. <laughs> I would have loved a fourth baby. Can you imagine if I had like a 15-year-old right now? Oh darling anyway <laughs> no nope, i'll just be a grandmama sometime there soon, you go. probably but um okay but but is there anything else you want to touch on for breast cancer awareness month or well monthly self breast exam is is i mean I'll, i don't know the exact percentage i should look that up but um you know a high number i think most breast cancers are found on on by the self breast the exam mm-hmm. <gasps> Mm-hmm. So checking, and, and I know people oftentimes say, yeah, but my tissue, my breast tissue is so lumpy. I don't know what's going on there. I would just say, I say to my patients, just do the exam so that you know what your normal is. It may be soft and lumpy, but you're looking for something that isn't your normal because it's usually... With breast cancer, it's usually that lump is different than the soft and lumpy. Isn't there, have I read itching? There can be itching. Some people can have itching. Sometimes you can have dimpling in the skin where the skin like pulls in like, like, yes. like on an orange peel. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have your nipple if it was, if it's out and then it inverts. That's, that needs to be looked at okay. immediately. Uh, any redness. Any tenderness that persists more than, you know, one or two weeks, that needs to be uh, checked out. Um, so I- any discharge from discharge the nipple. Discharge of the nipple, okay. Especially if there's like a brownish or bloody discharge. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that needs to. Yeah. You know, certainly if you feel a lump in the, in the um, armpit, mm. that needs to get checked out. I do know that doing comedy for breast cancer Mm -hmm. for 20 years Mm -hmm. that I have had it's been very encouraging when I go and do these things the the people that put these vents on that work with breast cancer patients all the time they say there's more and more survivors like Mm. if I do a survivor luncheon or a big event at night Mm -hmm. they'll say all the survivors stand like you know five years ten years Mm -hmm. there are 90 something year old women standing up it is getting better and Mm -hmm. better they're finding more they're able to heal and take care of people Mm -hmm. more and more every year it's very encouraging it is when you go to those yeah it is and and that's yeah because some people won't get checked out because they're thinking i don't want to find out if i have cancer well if you find out we can do something about it so uh and and you're right the survival rates are 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 much improved oh and remember the a couple years ago Mm -hmm. i had gotten a mammogram and then 
now the place that I go to has 3D. Mm-hmm. So you like for people to have mm-hmm. a 3D mm-hmm. mammogram. And most everybody's getting that I now, think, aren't they? Yeah, I think most facilities uh, offer it. And I, uh, you know, I know my the practice I'm in, our ancillary offers a, a 2D memo still because some insurances won't pay for the 3D. But, but um, you know, our practice offers... A seven, for a $75 fee, you can do the additional 3D mammography if your insurance doesn't cover it. So most facilities, I think, will have a fairly nominal fee if you want to get the 3D and your insurance doesn't cover it. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it gives a lot more definition. We're, I, I, what I'm seeing just clinically, uh, and I don't know the statistics, but I know in my practice, I'm seeing... Uh, less need for additional ultrasound imaging um, because they can see the images are so much better on the 3D mammography. Because with a 2D mammography, people were getting called back all the time for an ultrasound all the time. It's, it seems like that's happening less with the 3D. Oh, that's good. So that's good. Know. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. Is there anything else, Miss Marty? I don't know anything else that you learned in all your all your <laughs> I go to all these your events. events. <laughs> no, I do. You probably I, have every tip there is. I do hear a lot. Yeah, I do, and I and I also see precious women. To me, you, there's no funner audience than a bunch of breast cancer survivors. Because yeah. I think, and ovarian. Once you've been through something bad like that, you know what's important in yeah. this world, yep. and you find out who your friends are, mm-hmm. and you want fun people around. You don't want to be around buttholes. <laughs> And there's some butthole people out there. <laughs> and you find out, you know, what life is about and uh-huh. how to live it. And, yeah. you know, and you celebrate every day. And yeah. so you're, t- you're talking about a fun bunch of women. You could get up and go boogity boogity boo and they go nuts. <laughs> but there, I've gone to so many breast cancer events where they'll have um, a lot of vendors there. Like, yeah. You know, like wigs and bras yeah. and mastectomy bras mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know and all that and and it's just i don't know it's uplifting it's sweet mm-hmm. it's a sweet community that's great i know but, I, I used to look good in pink before i got rosacea but i can still <laughs> do <laughs> splashes of it i go on the breast cancer walks with my friend that is a survivor yeah. so um yeah, I love October. You know, I was born in October, <laughs> and um, and I love Breast Cancer yeah. Awareness Month. Well, I'm so. sure they love you at those events. I'm well, sure thank you're you. I hope fabulous. I, I hope I lift up people. They Speaking, sure lift me up. Speaking of events, oh goodness oh. gracious! So, oh goodness, by this time, okay, let me see. Where am I going to be? I'm alone. I have to remind myself. Okay, so... Like November, um, yeah. December. Okay. Yeah, you can catch me at... Um, uh, I know I've said... How many times have I said this Wisconsin? And y'all have had to tell me the name. <laughs> Wakash, Wak- Waukesha. 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 And then um, uh, I'll be at a breast cancer event in Knoxville, Tennessee that I think they're selling tickets to. All this you can find on my website, LeahMorgan.com, and also Phoenix, Arizona, Austin, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, and uh, Morgantown, North Carolina in the 2020. And, oh, what else is in 2020? West Palm Beach. Oh, nice. Um, Let's go to that one. I know. And um, and I'm doing um, and on Mackinac Island again. I'm going back up oh, to Mackinac nice. Island. Um, in 2020 for a marriage retreat, a big marriage conference where I do a bit on the five love languages and the, oh. the man who wrote that, Gary Chapman, is going to be speaking at that. So I'm really excited because um, yeah. Jim Gaffin had just had a comedy special out called Quality Time. So if you have not read the five love languages, honey, you've got to yeah. read it. Yeah. It is so wonderful. But anyway, we got to do an episode on that. Yes. And how mine are not fed. Mm-hmm. I think we talked about it in a previous episode, but I don't know if we did the whole, went all through all the languages and. Yeah. And you know, there's a book on your children. So Sweet Forest has a love language. And when y'all find out what his love language is, you can feed that. Because I think Maggie's has got to be words of affirmation. 
She doesn't care a thing in the world about gifts. She's not driven by money. But, she, I mean, she works for a nonprofit, make a win. So, <laughs> it's but a perfect you, fit. But I buy her earrings, or you know, and they end up in the bottom of her car. I mean, she <laughs> does not care about stuff. Yeah. She doesn't care about gifts. She just wants to, to be with you and that, you know. Yeah. And then my baby is very bougie. She <laughs> likes gifts. <laughs> She likes stuff. She likes a good eyeliner. She loves a good eyeliner. <laughs> loves a purse. Um, and then Charlie, I don't know. I need to find out what. Maybe it might be acts of service for him. That's oh. what Chuck Morgan's is. If my husband, if I, if I bake a um, Duncan Hines cake mix, honey, he doesn't. It doesn't have to be if the something's cooking in an oven and it smells like bleach, <laughs> and I vacuumed out my own car. He wants to cry. If I, when I go, if one time Charlie and I f- did the garage and, and got it organized and cleaned it and swept it out. And I mean, he, I literally teared up and I oh. thought, that, I know this is so terrible that we don't pay attention to, I know. but everybody's busy and he's anal retentive. So anyway, the, he is his acts of service. Mine is words of affirmation, which is not hard. Yeah. I mean, it's really not hard. Yeah. All you have to say, you're funny. You're pretty. And, you're a good mommy. You and, know, and you're all those things. I'm a, yeah, thank you. I you're feel like I. Yeah, you are. Thank you. I fe- well, and you know, that fills my love tank. Yeah. Well, that's all a little, just a word, know. you know. But so for easy. him. I said, Forrest, you I have gotta, to take that test. We need to find out what Forrest is. And then, is. then we'll find out that you know what a, yours I've is, been Forrest? a crummy mom for 27 years. <laughs> I don't know for sure. I haven't taken a test. Or you can take it online now. You don't even have to get the book. What do you think it is? I feel like probably acts of service. Acts of acts service. service. When somebody does something for you. You're not one of those men that has to have quality time where you sit and watch, I don't know, a documentary and you've just got to have her sitting there with you. No. Okay. Because there's some women, you know, yeah. that you got to sit and watch ESPN or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't need that. I don't need time with, I don't, yeah. Yeah. But, um. I, I think it's so true. Yeah. And then physical touch, you know, people that just want to hug and kiss and do, and that physical touch is their love language. Well, maybe Andy and I should sign up for that conference. Well, I'm telling you that Chuck Morgan and I should go. There's all kinds of, you know, that are not like you're about to get a divorce. It's not that. No, it's no. something that enhances. Yeah, your, yeah, yeah. So the people that have hired me to do that, we're talking about oxy. Okay, what is that? Tocin? Oxytocin? Oxytocin. When a woman, when a man listens to his wife, she gets a rush of that oxytocin. oxytocin. Like when you nursed. And, We're so easy. That's yeah. <laughs> and when a man, guess when they release theirs? Right after, you know what? <laughs> so they're trying to tell people, if you just listen to your wife, she'll be tickled. She'll do it. Then you can have your release of oxytocin, you know. But if you don't listen to your wife and you ignore her, yeah, she's not in the mood. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah, it's all but they give you all those kind of little tips oh, and communication cool. and all that. So anyway, I'm the entertainment oh, of that weekend. Fantastic. But they're going to have certain speakers come and talk about all these different things. But nice. that's in um, that's not till October two, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. But it's in well, Mackinac hopefully, Island. Hopefully, Andy and I'll still be married by then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if I'll be married to Chuck <laughs> if he doesn't start telling me I'm pretty. And you know, a woman needs to hear that she's pretty when she's going through freaking menopause. Yeah, no, no kidding. When you're sweaty and pissed. All right. On that note, <laughs> thanks everybody for listening. Yes, thanks for listening, and make sure to get your mammogram and do self breast exam every month. Yes, and go to Sweaty and Pissed on Facebook and like our page, and you'll find out more information. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Sweaty and pissed. Sweaty and pissed. Menopause makes me sweaty and pissed.